Hi guys, it is April 27, 2019. I, I don't, I, if, if this was not, not life that we're living here <laughs> and it was theater, you know, that you actually, you bought a ticket and you handed over your ticket and you went in and had a seat and then the theater was, uh, you know, that curtain went up and the play began the staged play, all of the actors on the stage, they were reading their lines. You, or even just think, you turn on Saturday Night Live, live from New York, it's Saturday night. You'd think you were watching a skit from SNL or Absurd Theater, and you'd laugh. You would laugh and laugh, but this is life. This is the reality that we live. Listen to this. Now, I just posted a video of Trump saying, get your shots. Vaccines are important. Everybody, you need to get your shots. And yeah, I got comments from people who actually voted for this guy because of what he was campaigning. You know, during that campaign, what he said, oh, vaccines, we need a vaccine safety commission and you know, the schedule of vaccines needs to be uh, looked into, and there's a link between autism and, and uh, these uh, vaccines, and get your shots. Now listen to this. Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security without cuts. Have to do it. Get rid of the fraud, get rid of the waste and abuse, but save it. People have been paying in for years, and now many of these candidates want to cut it. You save it by making the United States, by making us rich again, by taking back all of the money that's being lost. I'll save Social Security. I'll save Medicare. Ben Carson wants to get rid of Medicare. You can't get rid of Medicare. You know, Medicare is a program that works. There's fraud, there's abuse, there's waste, but you don't get rid of Medicare. You can't do that. People love Medicare, and it's unfair to them. I'm going to fix it, make it better, but I'm not going to cut it. I will get rid of the fraud, the waste, the abuse, all of the problems, but we will have Medicare. But we're not going to hurt the people who've been paying into Social Security their whole life, and then all of a sudden they're supposed to get less every... Uh, you, don't have, you, you, you want to listen to this guy say that over and over and over and over and over again? Go ahead, click on the link below. Ouch, Social Security taxes won't meet payouts starting next year. And the president's fiscal year 2020 budget, it literally leaves seniors in the cold. All right, I'm not going to read even the highlights, but just this one here. Mm. Trustees estimate, estimate that benefits will be cut to less than 80% of what retirees have been counting on. Yay! You want to hear the cuts? Ooh, it's going to be a painful 2020 for an awful lot of older Americans who have no one because family has been just shredded. And that doesn't mean every uh, senior doesn't have family to count on, but most don't. Budgets. Yes, this budget would drastically cut pro programs that affect Americans, the oldest Americans, including many vulnerable citizens, disability, like me. I'm on disability. Why? Because I don't want to work and I, I scammed the system and I lied, claiming that I was disabled. No. Your judgments are unwelcome here. I had a stroke due to my government, the FDA, putting medication on the market. They claim it's safe. And it's not. So I had to end my career. Yeah. <laughs> How is it that Americans can't get that their gov gov government is so evil and so criminally corrupt? And it continues, even with this president. So the president's spending plans call 
for deep reductions to Social Security disability insurance, breaking his promise not to touch Social Security. It also includes cuts to Medicare, another program he promised not to touch. Do you think he's just getting rid of the fraud and the waste, but Americans won't be affected? Bullshit! By gutting Medicaid, the president's budget jeopardizes access to the long-term care covered by the program, violating another of President Trump's campaign pledges. Other programs that feed needy and isolated seniors, keep them warm in their homes, and help them navigate the complexities of Medicare, eliminated or slashed. There are, there's a program where seniors can call and get free answers to Medicare that is so complex and it is uh, increasing in its complexity. A month ago, an elderly res uh, tenant here in the apartment complex that I live in asked me if I could look at her these Medicare documents that she had just received because she was just placed on Medicare. Her private health insurance cost her $84 a month. Medicare, $174. I looked at these documents and I said, I, I, I have no clue. So that program that allowed her to call and get answers and she said the woman was really nice and went really slow and explained things in very simple terms. He wants to eliminate Trump. Okay. Um, okay. The disability that I get is 750 a month. Yeah, your donations have been greatly appreciated. Um, I have the IRS taking out of my Social Security disability and the Department of Treasury. In 2007, I got a notice from the IRS that I owed 43000 in taxes from 2002, which I paid, but I was an attorney and it was on a settlement it was a contingency fee. I paid the taxes on my one-third. My client did not pay two, uh, the taxes on her two-thirds. And I got stuck with it. Family is really important. So when you have a stroke, you can't figure things out. Oh, yeah. Well, you post videos and you sound fine. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, I, I called the IRS and I got hung up on. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was trying to explain what was taking place, you know, with this bill that I got. And he said, we all have problems and hung up. I am not kidding. So when you have a brain that's so overwhelmed and overloaded, there's a lot you can't figure out. 2011, I get a notice from the U.S. Treasury Department notifying me that they're going to be taking out from my Social Security disability again for my student loan for law school that I had paid about 35000 on. Oh, but guess what? The government gave me a stroke and ended my career. So I get 750 do you think seeing this information doesn't kind of like, oh, inject a little bit of, uh-oh. All right. Our government is a criminal organization. Criminals, well, they don't care what they do to people. Trump is one of the criminals. So... We have been watching this destruction over and over and over again. It does not matter a change in the president.
President of the United States, it does not matter. The destruction continues, which means the destruction will continue. It will be ongoing. Eventually, it's going to get to you. What are you going to do about it? Well, families have to come together and take care of one another. Communities have to come together and take care of one another. And yeah, I sure would love to be able to get Americans to just stop paying taxes, disobey the orders of your authority figures, and for communities to hash out, okay, this is how we're going to be, uh, this is what we want to create, you know, a barter system or some kind of currency that you create within your own community. Your jobs are being eliminated. Now kids are going to college, universities, coming out with extraordinary debt, and they can't find jobs. We are a service sector economy, a tech economy, and we're becoming an automated economy. People um, reevaluate what uh, what you're doing and if you're not doing anything eventually it will come to you. Another thing that I want to point out is the comfortable are still living in a delusion with rose colored glasses on and they still are programmed to repeat the script. Entitlement programs. You don't deserve this. This is a government handout. More and more Americans are getting sick every single day. More and more are becoming disabled. And more and more need help. So when you see chronic conditions exponentially increasing all illness, all syndromes, disease, viruses all over. Well, when family is gone and community is gone, you either kill yourself or you live a miserable life on your piddly social security. But it does keep people alive. It doesn't help them in any way beyond keeping people alive. Now, a few are in a, a good position, but most are not. So, we've got a big, big problem here. When you see this happening across the board, cuts, disability, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, all of these programs that help the elderly, communities better come together and help one another. Because this is not going to stop. Yeah. So this budget proposes to cut billions from Social Security Disability Insurance. And it's going to force people to work. Force people who are disabled. Hmm. Okay. Uh, unconscionable? Yeah. Limiting the retroactivity of applications for disabilities disability benefits from 12 months to 6 months. Huge cut. So that proposal will cut SS, uh, Social Security disability benefits by an average of 7000 for beneficiaries. Denial of unemployment compensation payments to certain SSDI beneficiaries. Those who are working part-time or there's you can I think the cap is 800. You can get $800 a month. Anything beyond that, you could get kicked off of disability. $800 a month. Uh, but if you're fired, well, you won't get unemployment. <laughs> God. Unreasonably capping the amount payable to individuals who receive supplemental security income. SSI while living with other SSI recipients. So that's going to hurt all those people. 
yes, there are people who lie and just want these government benefits because they don't want to work. Most need them. Get it. Most need them. And when you recognize what has happened to this country, when you understand, have a basic understanding of all of these agendas that are taking place, then you'll get, yeah, most do need these programs. But those who are still comfortable, wow, your judgment, oof, it's hard to take. We call on President Trump to return to the commitment he made with the American people who, when he ran for election in 2016, promising to keep his hands off Social Security rather than using it as a piggy bank to help pay for tax cuts for the wealthy, and that has been going on for two years. But I support Trump as he has made corporations all of his friends, the bankers, and the 1%, far more wealthy, and the average American is just going down the tubes or going off the cliff. President's budget includes no proposals to directly affect Social Security cost of living. My 750 has been 750 every year for many many years the I remember one increase a dollar yippee that's twelve dollars a year I could do so much with that all right so Trump is proposing 846 billion in Medicare cost savings many of these savings come from cuts to Medicare providers and suppliers which in turn could affect the care that is available to Medicare beneficiaries. Um, policy changes to the prescription drug benefit that would impact Medicare spending and beneficiary costs out of pocket maximum coming for Part D. Um, most um, more costly to seniors. Yes, it will be. It will mean savings for some seniors, but the larger percentage of seniors are going to be seeing increases. Eliminating cost sharing on generic drugs and biosimilars for local, uh, God, for low income beneficiaries. It would slash funding for these, uh, for Medicaid, um, change the structure of the program into a per capita cap or Medicaid block, which means the federal government will only be giving a certain dimension, a, an arbitrary, arbitrary amount to the states. And what is that going to do? It's going to increase your taxes as residents of states because the states, well, they claim they're broke, right? All right. Uh, guys, come on. This is all deliberate. Limit federal funding for state Medicare programs to an arbitrary amount. Um, cutting benefits and or limiting eligibility for Medicaid as our population gets sicker. President's budget repeals Affordable Care Act. Oh God, yes. That ping pong ball that we just watch go back and forth over the net. Oh, we watch this. During the Obama years, Republicans, you had the House and Senate, you could have repealed uh, Affordable Care Act very quickly. You didn't because we don't have two parties. All right. Um, including the Medicaid expansion and subsidized marketplaces, which provide coverage for near seniors to these marketplaces, repealing the expansion would cut the Medicaid program by over 300 billion. Uh, states could address their funding shortfalls in ways that would harm seniors and their families. Hey, scaling back nursing, nursing home quality service and safety protections. Oh, that won't be a problem because we know our nursing homes provide really good services and safety for those seniors, don't we? 
requiring patients, spouses, children, and other family members to cover the cost of nursing home care, exhausting much of their savings, and boy, well, we know money trumps love and care. That's going to cause an awful lot of derision, division in families, uh, even more so than exists today. Tightening eligibility criteria for home and community-based services, resulting in more individuals moving into nursing homes, limiting the number of people served. Other programs that are being cut, elder rights support activities, chronic disease, self-management, education, and falls prevention. The state health insurance assistance program uh, that provides free, personalized, unbiased counseling on the growing complexities of Medicare. The Title V Senior Community Service Employment Program. Wow. Uh, it's a job training program um, to nearly 60,000 low-income older adults. You want people to work, but let's eliminate this program? That makes sense. Uh, eliminate the community services block grant, the community de development block grant, social services block grant, Meals on Wheels. Less and less seniors will be getting their meals. Low income home energy assistance program. Get rid of that. Eliminate it. Yeah. Approximately 7 million households that receive the assistance with heating and cooling costs. One third are over the age of 60 and other programs. Okay, so we do have a psychopathic, narcissistic country in which we live. It is evil, it is criminal, and well, how do you fix all of this? You can only fix it small. Fix your family. Families need to Step up to the plate and take care of one another. Fix your communities. See, when you fix your family, that will have a ripple effect on the community. And then community members come together and figure out how you're going to survive all of this. Because things are rapidly accelerating and more and more people are in need. And a lot of people are left with, I just want to die. I hear that more and more. I want out. Living has become just this miserable day after day existence. That is the reality of millions upon millions upon millions of Americans today. It is a reality, so we need to watch our judgment of an awful lot of people who are really struggling day after day. Okay, all links are below.